everyone. My name is Zuhayb Sheikh. I'm the head of programming for Fierce Life Sciences, and we're excited uh, to have uh, on the line Jeremy Troshu, uh, Vice President and General Manager of Pharmaceutical Development Services from Catalent. Uh, how are you today, Jeremy? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Glad to be speaking with you and chatting with you today. So let's jump uh, right into things. Um, so what factors should be considered when planning for scale of, of your development program? Well, actually, there's a, there's a lot of factors. Um, this is a you know a, a pretty uh, downing uh, endeavor. But you know, if you want to emphasize just a, a few ones, clearly you want to have a good sense of where your formulation is at, uh, what equipment you know training scale you are considering for your you know next phase, depending on when you're doing that uh, that scale up. Um, I mean, those are going to be informing a lot of decisions. So having a good sense of that or being able to articulate, you know, some of the needs and challenges with, um, you know, the partner you'd select to help you do that scale up, uh, that'd be critical. Uh, similarly, I think having a good understanding of the, you know, development history and, and making sure that, you know, people that worked on the very early steps, you know, even preclinical, um, anything around, you know, uh, execute compatibility, metro characterization. I mean, all those data points are going to help you you know, define and design uh, the right scale of, you know, program and process. So what we tend to recommend is as much as possible, uh, connect with the individuals that were involved, you know, earlier in, in the development process, sometimes not doable, visible, because the molecule, the program has changed hands over the years. Um, and, you know, if we've been able in our case to, you know, support that program, maybe in one of our other sites was in the network, We'll make sure to you know bring up and involve those individuals also early as part of the discussions. So, what are potential pro, uh, problems that could arise during tech transfer? Well, again, uh, numerous ones. Uh, you know, I, I think you know you gotta you gotta start with you know conversely to you know formulation. Um, often, you know, in in those steps, you're gonna think about do I have the right formulation? Is there, I would say optimization work to be done, maybe some true reformulation. Um, but in general, I think the one of the main challenges is going to be around the scale up in terms of you used to have maybe go first in human, uh, a manual, you know, capsule fill process, um, maybe 10,000 units. And now suddenly you're looking at, you know, having 100,000, you know, in some form of, you know, automated, you know, fashion. So your, your scale up and your planning to think about the equipment train, uh, again, is it, uh, you know, a process that is robust enough to accommodate that, you know, is there's going to be, you know, issues because you were on X, you know, equipment train and now you're going to a, a different one. So that, that is something that we see often as, as real hurdles. Uh, same thing with, with the formulation, you know, is it going to, again, be accommodated to, you know, the new scale and the new requirements that, you know, you're looking for in that process. Um, also, and, you know, not to be, um, you know, underestimated, you know, the methods and all the analytical work and the clean, you know, uh, method that needs to be developed. Often you, you're going to have, you know, some, I call it basic and, you know, just to get going to have a proof of concept, but now you need to have something that will ultimately need to be validated. And so it requires, you know, a little more, a little more work and, you know, sometimes you need to go back to, to the drawing board. And then the last piece, which, you know, we're seeing more and more, um, if you think about the oncology products and, you know, indications that are out there in the pipelines, uh, higher potency, you know, of the molecules and the programs we have to deal with. Therefore, you know, containment requirements are also critical. And it's one thing to, you know, handle, you know, you know, high potency compounds, you know, in the GLP space, you know, at, you know, small quantity. And then when you get into the GMP space and making sure that you have the right strategy to contain it, sometimes that has implication on the actual equipment you're going to use and you're going to have to do a, a timeout and do an engineering design step on how you're going to have the right strategy to handle those compounds. So again, just highlighting a few, but um, that's the fun of development. Uh, you will encounter a, a lot of challenges. It's about the, the planning and having an overarching and holistic vision of what are those different work streams that need to be put in place to uh, have a successful scale. So what steps has Catalan taken operationally to support projects as they scale up? Well, you know, as you know, we've, uh, you know, been in the space for, for a while. Uh, so we've, we've dealt with, um, you know, situation challenges like that for, for many years. But, you know, frankly, I think historically, uh, we would apply for a good project and program management. 
um, you know, maybe a, an elegant way of, you know, coordinating brute force when you're trying to, uh, you know, tech transfer um, a molecule either from the outside or, you know, scale up a molecular program from one early development site to one of our, you know, commercial ready um, site. What we've learned, especially over the last three years, and we've had a more deliberate approach, is to really try to understand what are the gaps that are contributing to, again, those challenges, and what are the, you know, opportunity to reduce, you know, cycle time, compress those timelines, you know, save API, de-risk, you know, those transition from, you know, one side to another. And so we've, uh, we've tasked, you know, our teams, you know, cross-functional from, you know, formulation, analytical, engineering, manufacturing, EHS, you know, procurement, to really start to harmonize, you know, a lot of those work streams. So it can be as simple as making sure that, you know, the uh, excipients and the raw material you're sourcing are going to be the same from one side to another because that's going to help a lot in your initial activities. Uh, you're going to have to harmonize your equipment train, so making sure that you may have that particular piece of equipment for that particular capability at that clinical scale, and then it becomes you know more phase appropriate to get into you know phase two, phase three, and then ultimately can support uh, commercial supply quantities. Uh, same thing, you know, in the lab, you know, sometimes you will have methods that are developed on uh, UPLCs and some that are on HPLCs. Well, if you don't have the mirroring equipment between your sites, uh, you're going to lose unnecessary time. So those are, you know, simple, pragmatic, but that takes a lot of homework in the, in the background to harmonize, you know, um, some of the investment, but also harmonize, as I mentioned earlier, like cleaning strategies. So making sure that when you're doing your early stage development, you have an eye towards planning, well, when it's going to scale up, when it's going to go transferring to another site, what should I start planning? And therefore, you know, having that, you know, phase appropriate, I would say, um, objective and, and guidance up front helps also make sure that, okay, you don't forget that soon you're going to be at the next stage. And then at some point, you're also going to have to launch and supply commercially, which has other, you know, uh, constraints. So, We've put that in place, you know, formally over the last two years, and we're very pleased to, uh, you know, be in the process of rolling out, you know, um, that offering, you know, under uh, the umbrella called One Express Solution, which really is about, you know, having formalized those best practices, those processes that have been harmonized with dedicated resource, dedicated program management, and, you know, very pleased to report that, you know, in the last, you know, year alone, we've done over, you know, 12, you know, uh, transfer such as a scale up between, you know, our early development sites, you know, and our larger, you know, clinical sites and now ultimately commercial. So very excited about uh, what we can offer to our clients. Sounds great. Are there advantages to working across a network of sites? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm, I'm a big believer that, you know, I think I mentioned that earlier, uh, leveraging phase appropriate expertise and skill set from you know the network that we can offer you know you know different you know vendors out there is critical. Um, the needs that a client will have for its program, um, you know, earlier preclinical, you know, to get you know into the clinic is going to be very different than you got you know to scale up you know industrialize your process and be ready for you know a clinical launch. And it does translate into how a site you know in a facility is going to operate. If you can, you know, be in that, you know, uh, early stage development focused, and you know, you you're gonna have more flexible, you know, processes. You're gonna be able to probably move a little faster when you go into a commercial site, you know, setup. Well, by definition, there's gonna be a little more rigidity and 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 infrastructure that needs to be taken into consideration because you have to meet, you know, the right regulatory requirements and the quality standards to be able to successfully launch a product. So being able to offer best of both worlds is I think something that is, is critical. And again, based on you know, the success we've had, we feel that our clients and clients out there uh, do value that phase of appropriate approach, while at the same time, making sure that there's seamless transition when their program moves from one side to another with the coordinated program management and this set of harmonized processes and, you know, investment we've made over the last couple of years. Can you give us any examples of when and why a project would transfer from site to site? Again, um, different, different reasons. Um, you know, if I can name a few, uh, definitely, you know, when you, you know, phase-based, so, you know, you get into the next phase, you know, different clinical trial to consider. 
that can be a trigger, um, you know, for one client to think of maybe going to a different site and, and scaling up. Um, definitely, you know, if, you know, the quantity is required, you know, and to, again, I'll type to your chart, but sometimes just, you know, as part of the strategy, additional, you know, indication, different clinical strategy, you know, um, different geographical strategy, uh, maybe a trigger. Um, often also, um, and that's more challenging, is uh, when you have a formulation issue and, and you, you're running into, you know, problems or, you know, process developability issue. And you need to rethink on, okay, is that the right, you know, side that's going to help me take it to the next level? Is that the right process and equipment train that is going to support the scale up of my program? So those are examples, you know, that will um, be the, the trigger points. But again, you, you tend to see really, you know, I don't know if there's a perfect sweet spot, but it's going to be around that phase two, phase two B, which, you know, sometimes get much blurred now with a lot of accelerated uh, pathways for, for development. But that's when you need to think about that, you know, commercial launch readiness, that, you know, robustness of your process. And this is when, again, we tend to recommend and accompany our existing clients, you know, early development network to consider going to, you know, our, you know, larger scale, you know, commercial supply sites. And all oh, that's when we tend to see, you know, a lot of uh, programs where clients say, hey, can you help me, you know, address this challenge and help me be ready for commercial launch? Well, very great insights, and uh, we appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today, Jeremy. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me.